And in conclusion tonight on InfoWars Nightly News, we're going to be interviewing Professor Tex Mars. And of course, he was a University of Texas a professor of space and aeronautics. He was an Air Force officer. Uh, he's one of the most read and best-selling authors in nonfiction on the science of robots. He's been a futurist. Uh, he's also a pastor. Uh, and he's written more than 40 books, including military uh, textbooks. He sold more than 20 million uh, books total. And he joins us uh, here in studio to get into the greatest threat to humanity, uh, the singularity, the entire technocracy. And so TexMars joins us here live on this Thursday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. The website is powerofprophecy.com. Uh, and he's got a new book coming out. You know, I, I was thinking about Tex a few weeks ago and meaning to call him, and then he called me. And I said, hey, I want you to come in and cover whatever you want to talk about. So he showed up today with a bunch of slides we're going to be showing you from his upcoming book that isn't out for a few months uh, that gets into the, I guess, the final revolution, you could call it, or at least the Illuminati thinks that. And so it's going to be a history lesson to understand what makes the establishment tick. I haven't read the new book yet because it's not even been printed. I just spent 10 minutes looking at some of the slides and notes. It looks like it's pretty important information. And so I'm very, very excited uh, to have a fellow Austinite, fellow Texan, fellow American, uh, Tex Mars here in our studios and his lovely wife, uh, Wanda. Uh, Tex, great to have you here, my friend. Alex, great to be with you. It really but, is. But good to see you. So, uh, wow, it's been a long time since I had you on the air. I appreciate you coming in. You've got your own radio show, of course. I should have added, it's so hard to go over such a lengthy bio. Uh, where should we start? here text on this uh, giant uh, subject that you're going to give the viewers out there the very first look at? Well, I, I think we really need to look at three elements of the Illuminati. If we want to study the history uh, of the Illuminati, of the elite, let's just call them. I, I think there are three great elements. The first one is the French Revolution. Yeah, people say, well, why go back that far? Because it really set up everything for today. Then a hundred years later, we had the communist explosion, the communist revolution uh, in the Soviet Union. Uh, and that set up for what we have today, which really is the high-tech explosion. Uh, people say, well, what, what do you mean? What's wrong with high-tech? What's wrong with the computers, uh, digital things, software, robotics? Uh, th there's nothing wrong with them exactly, but they are setting up a police state all around us. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not something that we're going to see outside of us. We are stuck inside of it. We're like in a box right now. We're in a vice. Uh, and, and in every case, there's a high-tech revolution going on. And the elite are spending billions of dollars to put us in this vice. We need to know what's going on, what's happening for the future. Uh, the next uh, 10 or 20 years, if we stay around that, that long, uh, but but there is there are things that are happening that people really need to understand, uh, and I want to give you credit uh, for being the first on these issues. You know, I was telling you that I was at a newsstand, uh, actually at the supermarket, uh, and there was your first issue. I didn't know you were going to put out a, a magazine. There was your first issue of Infowars magazine. I said, "Hey, want to look at this?" Uh, and there on the cover was well, it was about robotics about how the, the military was using drones and other robots. Inside was a, a great article. Uh, I want to give people a quote from you about that. Because at that very moment, I was working on my new book, Robot Alchemy. And I said, wow, this, <laughs> this fits perfectly. In fact, we'll show folks a document yeah. cam shot, a first look uh, at the uh, cover of one of the big coffee table sized books that you've put out so many bestsellers of, like Codex uh, Magica, Robot Robot uh, Alchemy. Please continue. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if we look at these three great revolutions, you know, Mikhail Gorbachev said everything in Russia, you know, from 1917 on, came from the French Revolution. Well, what do you, what do you have in the French Revolution? Illuminati Jacobins. Yeah, exactly. The Illuminati Jacobins, that's right. You, you have uh, Lord Rothschild and his beginnings at that time. Uh, you have the, the, the terror that began, the guillotine. That's how they got most of the big palaces in France and still own the Rothschild wine, yeah. literally just stolen. Uh, I mean, amazing. And, and, yeah. and you know, of course, you mentioned technology. I want to go back and, sure. and take your time, Tex. We've got an hour, and I'm going to let All you right. roll here and, and, and only interrupt half as much. But, but just to back up what you're saying here, 
it's not people say well you're a troglodyte you're anti-technology no you wrote the first big bestseller on robotics you've, yeah, you've yeah. written technology books and you know the uh, the literal what is the best-selling uh, textbook on you know military uh, armed service courses I mean such an incredible bio you're a pro technology guy it's that they're building Trojan horses into it all to spy to control they're taking it and twisting it and I guess that's why you call it alchemy so we'll get back into that but yeah it's, it's take magic your, it's witchcraft basically so, so take your time. Start at Wysop, the French Revolution. For people that don't know, right before we went live here, mm -hmm. started, started taping to uh, air on the show, you said, you know, it's funny, there's a photo or, or, or a painting of, of, of Adam Wysop, of, of the founder of the Illuminati. People think that's just a rumor. And I'm glad you said that because people think it's in movies. Mm -hmm. They don't know it's Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> that's right. They don't know it's actual real history. So take your time. You've got the floor. Start at the beginning. Well, at the same time America was having all of its ferment of our American Revolution, thank God we had people, we had Thomas Jefferson and others uh, who were not of a dictatorial mind. So our revolution went a different direction than the French's, that the uh, Francis did. But the, the Frenchmen really had a problem. Uh, first of all, they had this king and queen. They needed to overthrow, you know, uh, uh, King Louis and Marie Antoinette. Uh, and, and they did. They, they stormed the Bastille. Who did this? Why, why, what got them so aroused? We had a, a, an amazing conspiracy. That's exactly what it was. We had Adam Weishaupt, who founded the Order of the Illuminati in 1776. Uh, and uh, then we had, of course, Rothschild, who funded the whole shebang. Uh, but it was the first great revolution. They, they, they said, we're going to, to promote democracy. Equality. And by the way, they got the records of it. That's how we know all this. Oh, yeah. When the writer got struck down with all the command orders. This is. Oh, yeah. I have a copy, in fact, one of only 10 in the world. Wow. Uh, of the first book uh, by Adam Weishaupt, when he set it all out, exactly what he intended to do. Adam Weishaupt was a professor. A, a Ooh, I wish you would have brought that. We've got to have you back. I, I, well, maybe I will. Uh, but he was a genius of a man, but he was called a devil man. He, he was a Jesuit. He was a Jewish man. Uh, he was a Mason. He was everything. He was everything. And he founded the Order of the Illuminati, uh, which you can read about. Now, he, he founded this, and it, the idea spread throughout Europe, but especially in France. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, they just killed the nobility. They set up the, the, uh, the guillotine. The, all they, oh, all no. they wanted was to kill the. They nobility. replaced one evil with one even ten times worse. But go, go, go through oh, it. Absolutely. Christianity was the, the, the great threat. Tell us the Illuminati goal. Well, I mean, it's pulled down everything. Tell them. Well, the Illuminati goal is just as you have stated on your program over and over and over again. Basically, they want to kill us. Listen. You Alex, tell them out there, Tex. Alex, well, you, you know, the, the problem is, is that there are too many of us. And, and, and they want to rule. How do they rule with seven billion people on this planet? The way they do it is to kill about six and a half billion. That sounds so fantastic. Uh, and how are they going to do this? They have devised, we, we're, we're going to take you through three revolutions, basically. The French Revolution, which is the setup for the whole thing. The communist explosion of the revolution, uh, which happened in the 20th century. And now that we're in the 21st century, 2013, now we have the high-tech revolution. It seems to be good, Alex. I mean, they've got everything for us. I was just reading an article here about drones. Did Anything you, you want to show, put them around here. We'll show people. Yeah. Did you know that they're going to have 75 to 80,000 jobs? I mean, this is a good thing. They're engineering yeah. the economy where the only jobs are in the tyranny. That's exactly. how you engineer exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, the majority of the new, uh, in the last since 9/11, that staged event. And of course, you know this, but mm -hmm. for viewers who may not, the majority of scholarships in technology aren't engineering for computers or whatever. It's for the surveillance grid. So they're designing it where that's the only choice you've got. Sorry. Well, there are many billions of dollars being spent for this by DARPA. Uh, and, and drones is only a small part of it. Uh, they're developing intelligent robots, for example. And, and people say, well, you know, robots, they're, they're clunky, metallic uh, things. You know, I've seen all the movies, all the science fiction. And, and you'll see all of these uh, in, in my book, uh, Robot Alchemy. Uh, you know, remember uh, Anne Francis and the, the robot Robbie? Yes. And Forbidden Planet? Danger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then we had Gort. 
uh, in the day the, uh, the Earth Stood Still, 1951. Uh, he was, uh, you know, after Patricia Neal and, and all of those things. We had good robots, we had bad robots. We had the Star Wars robots, but then we had the Blade Runner uh, guys. He came out and killed his own uh, uh, creator. The replicant. Exactly. Well, in about 20 years from now, people listening to me understand this. In about 20 years from now, we're going to reach singularity. What does singularity mean? The roboticists say, we're talking about the doctors uh, and so forth and, and various professors at the universities, they say that in about 20 to 25 years we're going to reach singularity. That means that robots, that their artificial intelligence has been gaining, gaining, gaining on the humans. We laugh at the robots now. You know, but we laugh well, at Big Blue people. beat a human, what was it, 10 years ago? Yeah, well, that's right. Or Deep Blue. Uh huh. But, but now we have robots that don't look like robots. We, we have, for example, the Eater robot. The Eater robot, what does it do? Well, it's a military robot, but it literally survives by eating human beings. That's right. They, they can grind up human beings, take the bodies on the battlefield, and feed them into in Eater. Uh, it, 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 it goes by biomass. That's how it, it runs itself. This is a, an example. I want to I show people some of the robots that the military is now creating. Now, we know about the drones. They're, they're not a few hundred, not even a few thousand. They're going to be hundreds of thousands of drones everywhere. The Pentagon already has something like 30,000 predators alone. Yeah, and, and the thing is, they're, they're not like you think. You know, you think you're going to see this big thing in the sky and, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to avoid it or whatever. No, they, they, they come, some of them are like flies. And you know, you're, you're being, you know, bothered by this. And it fly. injects you with a bioweapon. It, 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 absolutely. You'll, you'll see the picture that we've got here where you, where you see the, the, the robotic fly has a small injector and he can inject you. So you're sitting on your back porch reading a magazine or whatever, <laughs> and suddenly you're, you're, you're dead. People want to know why. They, they don't understand. But the Air Force came out a few weeks ago with this new film showing the drone flies over and drops hundreds of little ones that land by your house and spy on you. But that's the high-tech ones. Yeah. Those are ones that can move. They already have the smart meter on the side of your house dialing into all your wireless, spying on you, and the White House uh, director... White House CIA director came out, you know, a few months ago, but transfer he got disgraced and said, "We're spying on you via your washing machine." Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. You know, the, the uh, refrigerator is spying on you. You know, I every, stole your thunder. You were going to quote what you saw in the magazine, uh, "The End uh, of Humanity." Well, your magazine had this article, uh, and I, I believe the article that, that you wrote was called "Rise of the Robots: The End of Humanity." Yes. That sounded like science fiction, but I knew that it wasn't. I read the article. Uh, it was amazing. I want, to, I want to quote you one of the things you said in that article. You said this, Alex. You said, in the coming decades, humanity will face a new kind of enslavement, a scientifically designed tyranny through which the elite will use robots to subjugate the rest of humanity and eliminate any pockets of non-cooperative resistance. That's from your article, October 2012. I, I thought about that a long time. I was working on this book. I was working on these kinds of robots uh, th that, that we're, we're going to see. Now, robots are an amazing thing. Frankly, you know, I love robots. I, I wrote the uh, uh, three cardinal books on them. I was the first to write the personal robot book, 1985. Uh, it was uh, selected by the Electronic Book Club, the Computer Book Club. I wrote the Great Robot Book. I even wrote a book on careers with robots. You are a leading futurist. Yeah, we, yeah well, I, or I, were I, in a previous I, incarnation. Ab absolutely, in a previous incarnation, exactly. Well, you know, I, I've had a hiatus here of about 25 years, and and uh, but I kept you know that interest in robotics and. Uh, and, and computers and all those things on the side. And I've been watching how things have been developing. Uh, you remember that Dwight Eisenhower as president, in his farewell address, he warned of the military industrial complex. Oh, yeah. Now, what is the military industrial complex? It's exactly what we're up against now. Now, well, warn them, Tex. I mean, because I want you to, to take now, over the show. T tell people out there, you present, tell them what's happening. Well, first of all, what, what you have to understand is robots are incredible creatures. Right now, uh, they're putting artificial intelligence in robots uh, that is amazing. Now, they can't do everything that you know we would like them to do. 
I mean, uh, a man has written a book, a very intelligent book, by the way, Levi, has written a book about sex with robots. Uh, they're, go they're going to be driverless cars. They're going to be your kitchen helpers. You're going to come home at the end of the day, and, and they're going to just wait on you. Google cars are already like in eight states. Yeah, well, yes, and, uh, you know, in every way, we're being watched, surveyed. But now back to the robots. If you have these robots, the, 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 the question is, what happens when the robots can outthink, outsmart, outdo human beings. He said, well, that won't ever happen. Oh, yes, it will happen. All the, all the robots. Well, it's game over. They already say they're not going to have a military. It's all going to be robots, ground, sea, and air, submarines, tiny ones, that will totally control us. And we're paying to build it now, and the elite program it. So even if the troops say no to killing people, the robots are going to say yes. And they say, like Bill Joy, as you know, in Wired Magazine said 12 right. years ago, he said that we're just going to kill everybody. And they publish this stuff telling us, and it's, you know, then people well, think it's funny. Yeah, you mentioned Bill Joy uh, in Wired Magazine there. He was the, the, the head of Sun Micro Computers, a, a major computer server company. Well, a guy like that, a billionaire, says, you know, I didn't give enough thought to computers, to, to, to robotic uh, instruments. I, I didn't think about intelligent machines, where they would go. But he says, basically... Well, let's, let's just look at what he said. He said, they don't need you. They don't need you. It's like the Stepford wives. Once they've got the robotic creatures built, they don't need the wives. They're going to kill them and get rid of them. That's the point. They don't need all these. They don't need these workers. There's no empathy. There's no ancestors. Oh, no. There's no soul. No. They are a perfect puppet to be. That's why our cover is this fake human with an Illuminati pyramid jacked into it. This is the devil trying to play God. Absolutely. But, but I keep going, and then I want to bring up the genetic side because there's two arms. They see the right arm of their takeover that they will achieve immortality in the words of Ray Kurzweil and others, other high priests via the merger with the cybernetic interface. But separately, they're also looking for the immortal cell lines. That's right. And, Absolutely. And, and, and which they actually talk about injecting themselves, but first testing on us, a zombie system where you're still alive, but you are undead. Your cells just keep dividing forever, but in some type of ordered system to where you are living dead. And, and that's not TV movies. This is what they're into. Well, we're operating on, on, on two wavelengths here. On one, you have transhumanism where humans become cyborgs. Okay. They take on the parts. They, they get a biochip in their brain. It all sounds so great. You can have an encyclopedia in your mind instantly, okay, just by installation. But it's going to have a back door. Well, uh, not just a back door. I think it's going to have a front door. You, you know, whatever they want you to do, you will do. Uh, and you'll, do, you'll dial out of the real world more and more into their false projections. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, y you know, I see it this way. Imagine a biochip in your brain. And you've got all this great knowledge. And they're going to make it so horrible, the world's going to be so hellish, we're going to want to go into the matrix. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm sorry. The, and the great no, deceiver runs it. that. And, and the beast right. will be seen everywhere as a talking image. I mean, the Bible's all coming true. I'm sorry. No, no. Well, you're right. That's Revelation 13. The image of the beast. He'll walk. He'll talk. Worldwide. Uh, it, you know, he will fill it, and it will serve him worldwide. That's right. His spirit will be in it. It's a robot. Yeah. Bill Clinton, you know, gave a speech in Ireland a few years ago, and he said, do you know what? Now, this, this is very prescient of, of uh, good old Bill there. But uh, President Clinton said, do you know what? He asked the audience. He said, we've reached the point now where there can be virtual reality everything. There can even be a virtual reality president. You think you're looking at the real man, but you're not. It's a virtual reality president. He signs documents. He goes to various public functions, cuts ribbons and all that. But it's a virtual reality president. I, that's, that's what he says. He's, we're at that stage now. And that's why they're wrapping everything in the TVs, the glitz, the false reality to force you into it. Yes. You see, everyone will want to have a chip put in them. Everyone will want to be superhuman. This is the transhuman. This is the well, well, Of course, they say... Well, of course, you, you I see your notes. I mean, you quote, you're the expert in the book, but talk about how they plan to force us, because Kurzweil says you'll be like a bug. You'll, you'll got to have this just to even be on the same plane as us. So they always sell this takeover as the trendiness or to live longer. Oh, yes. Well, you know, they're, they're going to get to the point where they say, we can download you into a robot. We can make you live forever. You can be immortal. 
Now, again, we're, we're probably 30 to 40 years from that, but we're going to have four, four less than that uh, immediately in the next 10 to 15 years. Now, let's just people look. are already living most of them in these fantasy video games. Absolutely, and and they're and that's what drones are. Human intelligence is in it, controlling it. Yeah, you know, there, there's games where you sit in your living room and and you send out your uh, avatar. In, uh, you know, into the world. He goes to Paris, he goes to Rome. You're sitting at home, you're a couch potato, you're doing nothing, but that your avatar is going out into the world for you, all right? But here's the problem. Once they have everybody on all these chips, you mentioned the back door uh, situation, then comes the hideous truth. They can make you do whatever they want. There's, there's no there's no requirement. You will willingly do it. Your brain will tell you to do it. Now, if you somehow rebel, if you're one of those, somehow the chip doesn't work. Here comes the drone. Here, well, here comes the drone, yeah. But, but even beyond that, imagine a horror machine. You're sitting in your living room, and, and somehow they, they give you the image that you're being waterboarded. No, that's it. It's, it's a pain induction chamber. It is. And, and it's, it's not just once or twice. But they will waterboard you forever and ever. They will this, put you into artificial hell. It, it could be an artificial hell uh, until you know you subscribe to their doctrines, their beliefs. And by the way, they say they're going to do all that. That's what's incredible. They write their own demonic poetry, uh, you know, and come out and admit they're torturing even children in front of their parents because they're the bad guys. And now they flip it. Just digressing for a moment, I'm sure you've seen they've now fully flipped from Al Qaeda's the threat to Al Qaeda's our friend, and Karzai <laughs> says the U.S. Sure. runs Al Qaeda, but that's the globalist. And then they say the new Al Qaeda, I, I have the LA Times, is Christian white patriots. And wow. they said our belligerents, this is the LA Times, they say, these are quotes, our belligerents will be crushed and that they're sending the federal task forces. I mean, these are like weird little Che Guevara, Joseph Stalin wannabes, because I see it bragging how they're going to get us. I mean, this is, and these aren't people that think of their life as 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 being somebody from what they create or who they know they get that through the state machine they're going to be given power it's the same spirit and these transhumanists not the low-level fools but the real ones mm -hmm. they are into the power that they're going to be controlling the master grid yep, absolutely uh, i mean it, 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 i mean just look at this right here it says uh, they're they are increasingly frightening numbers of cells of angry men in the united states preparing for combat we can give a document cam with the U.S. government. They're unusually heavily armed, blinded by an incredible hatred, often motivated by religious zeal, and it's got the Southern Poverty Law Center report, Christians. They are not jihadists. They are white, right-wing Americans, nearly all of which have obsessive attachment to guns. No, we know when they come for that, that's the canary in the coal mine, uh, who may represent a greater danger to the lives of American civilians than international terrorists. And then it goes on to say, that, you know, uh, we need to have the federal government and the task force, which they've already got going, it's now flipping it, deal with these domestic groups because they are a bigger threat than foreign terrorists. That's at the end. And it goes on. It says, how can we reverse? What can be done to reverse this tide of belligerent ignorance? And it says... Federal task forces. Federal task so, forces. So, so, yeah. I mean, this is literal. We knew this was going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Nothing about Al Qaeda. Right. Christians, gun owners, libertarians, returning veterans who've gone and done their dirty work. We're done with you. Robots are here now. In fact, I've talked to Marines. That's I've right. talked to Marine Corps That's Colonel. Exactly it. Who told me <coughs> at Urban Warrior 13 years ago in Oakland, he said, listen, he goes, you think that robot, they had a Humvee drive in with a 50 mm -hmm. cal, it targets off sound and movement. There's no humans. You know, there's humans driving it from a satellite wherever they want. They had guys that are doing it by hand. And that then takes out practicing, you know, the American people. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm ranting here. No, you're not. But, but, but he, he said, listen, Alex, he goes, I know what you do. He goes, he goes, you have no idea. This is when our cameras are off and everything's mm -hmm. happening. And he goes, he goes there, there's stuff I can't tell you about. He goes, it's right out of Terminator. And he, he said, there's stuff for PSYOPs, you name it. And I said, well, like, what is it? And he just said... He just said, well, this is about, you know, 20, 30 years behind what you're seeing here. And, of course, now all that's coming out. It is. But, but, but the issue is, <clears throat> I then talked to some other people in the military, and for PSYOPs, they, they have the eaters that eat the flesh and things and then, mm -hmm. and then biomechanically feed themselves. They have them just like out of the movie Terminator, 
except they're on wheels, but they have like skull heads and things just to terrorize people mm. because they've done tests with those in simulations on the bases with role players that sign, you sign national security, like actors and people. <laughs> and now they're doing drills. And this, I was told this before it came out in the news where the troops were saying, why are we practicing mowing down people in football jerseys, Dallas Cowboy jerseys and, and, and John Deere hats? Because it was all white, like 90% mm. white guys wearing John Deere hats, farmers, grandpa. Some other military people I was talking to we're telling me, I don't know, a few years ago now, mm -hmm. time flies, maybe three years ago, that we're having all these drills where we practice mowing down people that look like mainline U.S. citizens and mainly white kind of good old boys, mm -hmm. like ranchers and people. John Deere hats, which, because they heard me talk about all the drills I'd been to, that's mainly who it was. And, you know, we, we, you know, we're not taking our guns. This is America. I have that on footage mm -hmm. in, my, in my Police State 2000 film and others. And they said, listen, because people complained about that, because of your films and other things, we now train with the same people, but dressed up with green makeup and stuff, and we practice mowing them down saying they're zombies. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I'm talking to a military guy who just retired, okay, he was pretty high level. Uh, and I, and I at dinner with another fella, and I, I thought, maybe these people are kooks. Mm -hmm. like, like, even I, I didn't get it at the time, because he didn't get it. Mm -hmm. and then it came out, they've had all these Homeland Security, Army, Marine Corps, giant drills, where they practice mowing down citizens. If they did that normally, it'd be a wake-up call. You call it a fun drill, and they're zombies. It's dehumanizing. Sure. But they're wearing Dallas Cowboy jerseys and, and, and the caps. Now they're just subhuman. And then that all came out in the news a few months ago. And it just blows me away. When I went a nurse in San Antonio 15, 16 years ago gave me documents. They were taking blood from babies at birth. I made calls. They're like, how do you have those documents? People didn't believe me. Came out a few years ago. It was true. I can't even believe this. You can't even believe it. The reality is so, there it is, zombies used for counterterrorism training. San Diego event, see? I mean, this, and look, who is it? That, that's men, women, and children. The DHS paper targets, $2 million mm -hmm. worth of five-year-old kids to shoot them. Tex, I mean, this is a nightmare. Go ahead. Talk about the spirit of these devil men, these Illuminati, and then, and then seriously, because I know you're telling me, go ahead and talk, but I want to hear what you have to say. Go through all your slides. It's amazing. Well, one of the things that people would say is, well, why? Why are they doing this? Well, you know, why do they hate human beings so much? Well, I, you know, I would go to the Old Testament where it says, where God actually said, all those who hate me love death. All those who hate me love death. It was during the French Revolution. They call it the terror. In the communist uh, revolution of 1917 all the way up to 1984, they call it the red terror. And, Lenin, uh, and now they use al-Qaeda they run to be our new terror. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but, but al-Qaeda can be uh, our friend or our enemy. Exactly. Depending on, on what uh, suits their purposes. But... Let's just look, for example, at jobs. You know, depopulation is, is their tactic, their strategy. You, you say, why? We have plenty of places that are unpopulated on the earth. We don't really have a population problem, but we do. Let me explain this to you. Foxconn is the largest corporation in the world. It's a Chinese group. Guys, pull up Suicide Nets. Just type it in. It's incredible. Go ahead. Now, but Al Gore runs it, so it's okay. It, well, yeah. Well, Foxconn has millions of employees, has one company that has 420,000 workers, huge combines. What do they make? They make all the iPhones that are made, all the millions of iPhones Slaves. that we have in America. Yeah, well, they're, it is slave labor. I think they make $1.67 a day. Uh, they live in dinky little rooms. They work six or seven days a week. They have no unions. They have nothing. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the people are so, so driven the peasants that they bring in to do these jobs, to do these you know, labor-intensive jobs, are, are so uh, uh, stricken with being a slave labor to being a drone, you might say, that they literally go to the top of the building, jump off, and kill themselves. The building, uh, uh, the building supervisors have had to put nets all the way around the buildings to keep people from jumping off the buildings. And when it happened, they're now doing forced abortions and drugging them uh, at the Foxconn, which Al Gore's on Apple, and they've said, charge a few more dollars, and these people could live well. And they're like, mm -hmm. no, it's that Apple's the most abusive, the most evil, and, 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 and but it's liberal, so it's okay. Yeah. As long as you right. call it liberal. You know, it's like when they say, let, you know, let's abort that ugly black baby. I'm sure you've seen that clip of the abortion mm, warrior guy. Yeah. And when he does, it's like, oh, that's liberal. <laughs> and you're, you're racist for not wanting to abort the, the black baby. I mean, it, it's like a weird, what are liberals? Because they're not liberals. They're sick weirdos. Well, they are sick uh, weirdos. I don't even call them liberals anymore. Uh, you know, Obama has Hispanics, blacks, uh, and uh, liberals. 
uh, homosexuals, you know, the, the whole uh, range of people that are just strange, the Hollywood crowd. Uh, now, I want to. I'm sorry, I that. interrupted. Okay. Go, no, go back so to what Foxconn. Here. Okay. Foxconn is the largest company in the world. What they do is make products for American companies. We don't make things anymore. We, we send the plans and designs overseas. They make millions of iPhones. Well, that's the management under Agenda 21. I know as an exactly. engineer, you know that. Yeah. We, with the rules, we can't build here now. It's designed like that. So it's designed to move it to China to kill them while they build it as a eugenics program. I'm sorry. But the people are, are incredibly unhappy. They realize they're being used for slaves. They're killing themselves. They're claiming they're going to have mass suicides. This is embarrassing for Apple. So Apple got together with... Foxconn, this huge Chinese conglomerate, says, what are we going to do about that? I'll tell you what they decided to do about it. They're going to go out and get four million robots. That's what they said, yeah. Four million robots. They've already got a million there, and it works out great for them. Why? Because human beings have to take leave. They have to take breaks. They get sick. They want days off. Why the future doesn't need us. Yeah, the, why the future doesn't need us. They've already got a million robots. It's working out so good that iPhone said, you know what? Apple said, well, we can bring one of our plants back here. We can have the robots work in America as well as over there. Now, here's the And problem. people say, well, that's just the future. The problem is it's been engineered by a dark force with an evil architecture. Go ahead. Well, what do you do? China, Red China, has a billion people. They need jobs. These were jobs. As bad and off as they were, they're jobs. Now they're all being laid off. They're being told, you complain, we'll replace you with a robot. Guys, pull up Foxconn replacing people with robots. Go ahead. And, and it's an amazing thing. They already have one a million robots. Where did they get the robots from? They got them from Fanuc Corporation, which is the largest industrial uh, uh, automation company in the world. Fanuc uses robots to make robots. That, that, in fact, they say that's the goal now. Uh, General Electric, all of them, is to have robots that work on robots that work at robots. And I've already talked to top engineers. With the computers, no one engineer knows how it works. In fact, it's almost like a ghost in the machine now. It's just working. Uh, mm -hmm. And the algorithms and the, the uh, humans are already removing ourselves. And if the globalists think they're going to control this, they're wrong. Absolutely. So what's Satan's plan? Well, you know, you say Satan. He's using human beings uh, today. To build our own destruction. He's right, he's right there. Well, they, they realize that human beings are not going to be needed. You see, we, we now have unemployment. It is a structural unemployment. Uh, and, and so as robots become more and more uh, intelligent, in the next 10, 15, 20 years, robots will be working at McDonald's. They'll be driving taxis. They'll be everywhere. It'll be ubiquitous. What do you do with all the people? Well, and that's why they're the rolling. Theaters. I was about to say, get, get to the punchline here. That's why they're rolling out militarized things to scare you so you feel okay when the sweet ones come along. It's all a bait and switch. Oh, look, all the dangerous ones, you're going to accept that. Oh, well, mm -hmm. these are the sweet ones. While well, the little sweet one, Japan's already put up Sentinel robots as a test that look like police but actually just camera platforms. Mm -hmm. And... When you get into all of that, it just it brings up so many points, Tex. I yeah. mean, people, oh, oh, here's my final point. I want your take on this and then, and then roll with it. Here's what blows me away and makes me so upset. I've seen the actuaries. They've done breakdowns that if they would just pay those people three, four dollars an hour, mm. actually the manufacturing, the components is what cost it. The, the assembly humans are doing is a tiny part of it. Just a fraction of, of, of them giving up their hundreds of billions in profit for Al Gore, who's, you know, the, who runs it all at Apple on their board. He's the real head honcho and works with the communist Chinese. They could lift up all of China, build a livable infrastructure, empower those people for a future. But instead, they've actuaried it to make it slave labor, to make it hellish, to have it be. I mean, it is designed to destroy America and Europe and leverage us out while annihilating the poor Chinese. So what I'm saying is it's all done diabolically. Yes, and then we've got to see them parade around saying it's liberal. Go ahead. Well, so, it, so you got to the key, though. You were saying they're not going to need us. Go ahead. No, they're not going to need us. As time goes on, we're going to have more and more people out of work. Uh, I, I expect that we'll have, you know, uh, now we have, what, 8%, 7 or 8%. We'll have 10%, 20%, 30%. Now, the, uh, people are now being offered freebies. We can't give you a job. Well, we'll, we'll get you uh, a phone. We'll pay your rent. We'll give you food stamps. We now have almost 50 million people on food stamps. They're going to continue those programs. But eventually they will say, what are we doing this for? 
What, now that we've got this military industrial complex so set up that everyone is in a prison, we've got drones watching everybody. We, we, we've got uh, their TVs watching, their, their refrigerators, they're watching. We're, we're, we've got them totally in a prison. Now, let's get rid of them. We don't need these people. They're useless eaters. And these people are psychopaths. They're psychopaths. And, and they, they give no thought at all to human beings. People think that Obama cares for the poor. Oh, my God. The, 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 the increased payroll taxes on poor. Exactly. Uh, and so they're going to come down on all of us. But everyone listening to me out there, you think you're going to keep your job. You're not going to keep your job. You're, it, it doesn't matter yeah, what you do. There. It doesn't matter what you do. In 10, 15, 20 years, there will be robots that are stronger, that are smarter, that can work, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week doing your job. They can outthink you. You say, no, that's not possible. Robots don't have that kind of intelligence. They will have very soon. It's called singularity. They will not only have your intelligence, they will surpass it. And they can build thousands. Robots will build robots. It's an amazing thing. We're showing you some pictures now about what they can do. That's today. They can play instruments. They can, they're, 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 they're robots that look like women. They're going to be sex partners. They're going to be all kinds of, uh, of, of robots. But believe me, they will take your job. What are, they, what are they going to do with you? What's going to be done with the millions of human beings? No, they've, they've, they've told happens. us, Tex, what they're going to do. Tell, and, and again, this is not our opinion, our projection, your analysis. They've all, the globalists have written countless books. You can source them. Sure. I know you're going to cover them in your book because that's what you do. They're telling us this is a foregone conclusion. Mm -hmm. And all the big rich people go to Ray Kurzweil events with world leaders and William Shatner. And they're all being told, go along with this. You'll be part of it. Oh, yeah. All the rest of us, bioweapon. Well, y you know... Technology is not bad. You know, you it's can, like a gun. Exactly. But it's whose hand it's in. Well, Asimov, you know, was a, was a great uh, writer of science fiction. He created the three laws of robots. Basically, the three laws of robots ensure, if they're programmed into robots, that robots will take care of human beings. They will tend to us. They will, you know, guard us and all these things. But it's, it's how you program the robots. I'm not worried about robots overtaking us. I'm not worried about it's robots. It's the elite that control them. Out, exactly. I'm, That's how they take you know, out humans out of the equation. But, 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 but expanding on that, his even better books as a visionary, written in the 40s, I think, were the Foundation series, which I know you probably read. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were the Hugo winner and a lot of others. And, and in that, they create computer systems that can predict off mass movements, off tracking all the data and your actions with computer chips mm -hmm. before they even had chips that to then feed into a master system for future prediction of over 90 percent they now have it mm. isaac asimov's understanding which we know others basically fed him a lot of it is was their master plan and again how did elites how did hg wells in say 1900 write about atomic bombs when the equations didn't exist yeah where what's happening there uh, well you, you know the elite meet constantly you know, we, we know about the secret meetings of the Bohemian Grove, of the Skull and Bones, uh, of the Council on Foreign Relations, and all the other uh, groups that meet. They meet and they, they plan out and they, they decide what we're, they're going to do to our lives. These are not meetings that we're uh, privileged Did to you attend. see Bloomberg? Two days ago, I, I meant to even cover this. I haven't. I've mentioned it. He said, I use mathematics and science to control things. I will decide what you eat. And he was explaining how he loves us and how, and, and it was like how he's this wonderful genius. And it said that he will run our life. Uh, guys, pull up Bloomberg. Uh, it's in the article. Bloomberg said he prepared for the next massacre. And in it, it's all how he would control. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm backing you up. Well, well I, uh, think about that. He prepared for the next massacre. He knew one was going to occur. Uh, and he said, let's all be ready for it. I mean, just, uh, just like. It's uh, more than that. They, they were staged. Is, I can is. look at just it. Just like 9-11. I'm not just saying that. They were both staged. They, they, Aurora is 100%. Of course. And, and we go back to 9-11, and they had everything ready for us. Remember that film? They came on TV over and over again of those uh, commandos uh, of Osama bin Laden jumping over those uh, yes. obstruction things, and over and over and over again. It was exactly like nine, uh, like. Uh, and they rolled uh, that right before it happened. It, 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 again, I mean, look at Aurora under. Air Force top psychiatrist from an entire base in San Antonio transferred to spend four or five hours a week with this one guy. 
a high level officer with him. He gets thirty something thousand dollars from DARPA in a human mind interface program. He's on seven drugs, and now they're going to give him truth serum to make him admit he did the murder alone, <laughs> which is actually when you're under that kind of mind control, as you know, puts you back under it. So now in in the Denver Post, they're going to drug him for the trial with a truth serum to make him go back into the personality because he told folks in the jail for the two days, I don't remember anything. I'm under control. And then they said he wasn't with people in a jail. The problem was they'd admitted he was in the jail. I mean, right. I, and you look at it, they did the whole thing. I mean, that that one, we really caught him. Just like Sirhan Sirhan, it came sure. out, didn't shoot any of the bullets and was under a truth serum drug, which can also be used as a hypnotic drug. It's not really a truth serum. It makes you highly suggestible where you'll say whatever they want. Go ahead. Well, they're driving us through these things. Yeah. They're, they're driving us. They're planning them. They're, they're executing them. Uh, and, and, you know, it, and it's just like 1984. On, at one moment, you know, Oceana is our enemy. The next day, they're our friend. Uh, you know, the, the, the Al-Qaeda of Syria are now our, our, our pals, our, our buddies, now that they're after Assad. But, but once they get in, then they'll be our enemies again. They'll, they'll, they'll bring turmoil and chaos. That's really the whole goal in the Middle East, to bring destabilization, to bring chaos. Uh, into those governments. We don't want a stable government in Iraq. We don't want one in sure. Afghanistan. We don't want them in, in Syria or Libya. We want all the turmoil, all the chaos, uh, because, you know, these, the elite, they advance through chaos. They've done it in World War I, World War II. They did it, as you said, the Jacobins, the Illuminati Revolution is really what that was. You're a smart, really smart guy, a visionary, and in so many ways, I mean, you know, proof 20 million books sold or whatever, and predicting so much that happened. I'm not just saying that. It's on record for folks that don't know who you are. Most people will. Let me ask you this. What do you think is going to happen in God's plan, how it unfolds? Because I was already a Christian. I've had spiritual experiences, but I'm as wicked as the day is long, and my works are dirty rags. You know, I mean, my, my heart's good, but the flesh is strong. You know, the spirit is there, but the you know, flesh is strong. Sure, that's true but, of all uh, of us. Exactly. But at the same time, now you really know. Either Revelation, Daniel, the whole Bible's real, and it's been proven over and over again by archaeology, or guys were in a time machine and came here and saw this. <laughs> Or evil people are using it as a template, but there's no way people 3,000, 2,000 years ago could come up with all this. What's really going to happen? I mean, it, it, it's, you know, the, we're told there's a rapture, so Christians all stand down. When did Christians get raptured in the Bible? I mean, what text, bottom line, where is it all going? What's going to happen? Well, we, we have to go to the book of Revelation. And, and I think it's all in there. The book of Daniel is important. Break down what's going to happen. Well, you, you know, we're, we're seeing it now. We're seeing a, a cashless society. Uh, we're seeing uh, robots that will take over for men. Uh, that's in Revelation uh, 13. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to see wars where androids, cyborgs, and human beings all conflict with each other. You, you won't know who the, the human being is or the cyborg uh, or whatever. Uh, but it, it's interesting that the Bible talks about uh, these, these creatures and they're not human beings. They're like they're like uh, 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 locust, but they're like scorpions. They have a, a, a they hurt people uh, in their tails. Uh, and, and there's all kinds of strange creatures in the Bible. And now uh, up to our generation, we couldn't understand these things. How can these strange uh, animal creatures? Uh, do these things? Where, where are these creatures? We haven't seen them anywhere of all the animal species on Earth. But if you look at what the military is developing, there they are. There's the alpha dog. Look at the picture of the alpha dog. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's as big as 10 human beings. He can run 20 miles to track you. He's called the alpha dog by the, the army. There's the cheetah. Why is he called cheetah? He's so fast. He, he's as fast, you know, three or four times as fast as a human. He's going he's gonna to track you down. He's going to hunt you. Uh, and he's going to kill you. Well, here's, here's an example. They have all these movies where humans go to outer space. We, you know, all this happens. It's going to be great. But they've decided no human space program now. It's all going to be robots. And Kurzweil and all of them say we're going to merge with the machines. And he goes, I don't believe in God yet. I will become God. And they all yeah, believe that's, this. That's their, that's and they've just, here's the thing. They've decided it's over for everybody. They've decided your course, my course, my children's course. And... You read the Bible, it says the elite will throw their gold in the streets, they'll try to hide under mountains. They're all going to get cheated, aren't they? Well, they are, you know, because you know, they will go too far. They will all go too far in, in what they're doing. You know, I, I, I see this of, 
uh, of uh, uh, Obama, I saw out of Bush, they will all go too far in, in what they're doing. You know, they, 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 first of all, they underestimate you and I. Well, you know, you've got this program. You're, 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 you're in way over 100 stations. I mean, this is not, somebody didn't come one day and say, I like your program, Alex. I'm going to give you 600 stations. That's the way they did Rush Limbaugh. That's the way they Glenn did Beck. Sean Hannity. You did it by, well, force of nature, God's help. Really. Well, I was about to say, they have artificial intelligence. We have spiritual uh, uh, discernment and providence. We have the creator of the universe beaming us information. Ab absolutely. You know, uh, people ask me all the time, how are you still alive? I would ask that of you. I think it's God. I think providence. No, I know it is. Ab absolutely. Uh, it's my grandmother praying for me in South Austin. There you go. There you go. Uh, I've met your mom and dad. They're wonderful Christian people. Uh, and, and I don't think God is going to let anything happen to us. Remember, God is in control. Well, if These I do get killed or you get killed, God, there's, a, there's an overall mission in that. We don't want to die. Yeah. We want to keep doing our work. But, but deep down, I'm not even afraid of getting killed. I'm afraid of that I didn't do a good job yet. I want to, I want to really expose <laughs> things. I want to learn how to yeah. shut up during an interview. <laughs> no, Anyways, no, no, no. But I Sure, but I mean, it, 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 it's, it's that I think it also takes their power when you just give it up, give up, you know, just give in, mm -hmm. and, and just say, God, it's in your hands. I mean, isn't that a powerful release? Because people think I'm trying to scare them. I'm trying to get people to take action. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to scare them because I've given up my fear. I've just said, you know what? It's in your hands. Wow. Uh, but then people hear the show and they go, I'm scared. Well, you should be scared not to fight this. Well, it's, it's like the, the robots, you know, they're going to take our jobs. What, what, you know, the Bible says. Yeah, there's no future if we don't beat this. What's the <laughs> point of laying down to it? I mean, well, uh, Jesus Christ Himself said, "Do not fear the man who can take your life. Fear the one who can take your life and your soul. They can't take our soul, Alex. We've got to give it up. <laughs> we we have to, well, we don't have to give it up. We're not going to give it up. No, no, exactly. What I'm saying is, we have God. Well, I mean, what's the? Because you're a pastor as well as all the other you know, PhDs, all the rest of it. What about um, the issue of where, where it talks about the 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 in the Bible they trafficked in men's souls in the end days? Well, it's Revelation 18. I think that's where we're into. If people want to know what age we're into, it's Revelation 18. There we see mystery Babylon the Great. But it's a great trading empire. It, it's free trade. That's how it controls. Yeah, it's, in, it's in, in fact, you were trying to get into the alchemy, borders. the witchcraft of it. Get into that. Yeah. Well, the alchemy, it says, says in Revelation 18 that everything is traded. You know, all of the goods that you can imagine are traded from nation to nation freely. It's free trade. Uh, and it says even the souls of men are traded. Think about that. After talking about all of these, the perfumes, the, uh, you know, the, the merchandise, uh, everything is traded. And look, look at the stock market and uh, the, the DAX and, uh, you know, we've got all of these markets all over the world. But they're trading the souls of men. I think that's interesting. They, they literally have the souls of men. I mean, the, the last four presidents we, we've had, George Herbert Walker Bush, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, now Barack Obama. What is the difference between any of them? None, there's not a bit of difference. They sold their soul to the devil. They trafficked in that. They're part of Mystery Babylon. And that's why if you look in their eyes closely, they all look sick, upset, and really scared, even if they're narcissists. You look at those guys, especially once yeah. they get in, they look freaked out. Well, you know, they, they have to be frightened. I understand now that George W. Bush may actually have Alzheimer's. He's got something wrong with him. Uh, he, he's afraid to go in various countries around the world because they're going to arrest him. You know, I mean, the guy did do horrible things. Uh, of course, the Republicans now are all talking about Obama using, uh, you, you know, the drones and all of that. But hey, who originated this? Who got that whole program going? Of course, it was Dick It's, to and it's totally w. congruent. It's like Quigley said, it, they want the illusion of choice on the surface. Who was the last, not that he was perfect, but, but real president? Eisenhower, Kennedy? I think the whole high-tech revolution that we're into now began in 1963. Oh, yeah. Did I you see the full quote? I'm sure you've seen the full 20-minute address. We ought to air that some night. We've done it years ago on the radio of Eisenhower's federal address. He said, he said there is a technological, I think he was a technocratic elite that are building mm -hmm. a system of control. And then he, went through, and he, then he said military-industrial complex. Mm -hmm. See, they always do the military-industrial complex. Beware that. He said there's a technocratic. Tronic, you know, technological elite. 
It, well, because he was, well, he was. They're he, the ones who are going to develop the robots. They're going to be the ones who are going to develop all these digital systems to to, to watch us. Uh, yeah, the, the you know it's interesting that that Eisenhower would do that. Here's a five star military general. I mean, if anybody would love the military industrial complex, it would be him. But in his farewell, most times farewell addresses are just little, you know, peon things that are that they say. Can you he said, watch out, technocrats are taking yeah, over. He gave, a, he gave a major speech the day he left office. It was his farewell address. If you can tell me what Truman or uh, 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 the Bushes said in their farewell address, you know, I'll, I'll pay you a hundred bucks. It was irrelevant. It was nothing. It was peanuts. But he said something very important. He said there is a technocratic elite here, the military industrial complex, and, and, and they seek unwarranted influence. That's right. That's the full and, quote. And, and, and future generations, you're going to have to watch out for these people. Uh, you know, we went, unfortunately, right into the Vietnam War. And, and I think the 1963 assassination of JFK was a coup d'etat. And, and who took office but JFK? All of the intelligence agencies were working together. Even Israel and, and France were working together, their intelligence agencies, to kill uh, JFK. LBJ got in. Everything changed in America. You know the old song by Don McLean, the, the day America died. That was the day. We didn't realize it. But a coup d'etat occurred. Now, we've had other good people. We, I, I, I think Ronald Reagan was basically a good man. Well, they shot him. Uh, but yeah, yeah, well, that's true, too. Hankley, uh, I mean, the, the Bushes were involved in that. They, they were, because... Why are the Bushes so powerful as minions? Uh, I, I, I mean, I guess because they were double dealers. With <clears throat> well, they'll do anything they're told to do. I mean, George W., come on. Uh, you know, the guy really, I, I shouldn't say this, but he didn't have any real brains. But he would do anything that Dick Cheney and his handlers told him to but do. Dick Cheney was the real president. I think he was. And I tell you, okay, keep going, Tex, and, and, and then we're going to go to break and come back with Ted Anderson with financial news. Get over all the points that after this interview is over, you wish you would have covered with all my uh, digressing. Well, I, I think you put your, your finger on it in that article in your magazine, InfoWars. Um, it's a shame you can't send out that, that first issue again where it had Rise of the Robots, the end of humanity. Um, you know, I, I, I have a quote by Dr. Paul Saffa of Stanford University. Here, I want people to get this in their mind and, and, and to really, you know, rumble it around. When we're, we're, the things we're talking about are so fantastic today. It, it just seems like incredible. But, but listen to this. He said the truly interesting question is what happens after we have truly intelligent robots? Truly intelligent robots that surpass human beings, that have different materials. They're not the metallic, clunky machines. They're truly intelligent robots. What happens after we have them? He says, if we're lucky, they'll treat us as pets. If we're not lucky, they'll treat us as food. Now, why would a professor at Stanford University, one of the... That's what there will be. There will be an energy situation. And yeah. if they're pre-programmed to survive off eating humans, as the Pentagon's doing, oh my God, it's just... I, I think these robots are going to build millions of them. We're not talking about billions. We're not talking about thousands. Well, here's the thing. You know about, about this as a, a, as a futurist and, and space and aeronautics professor and everything else from University of Texas and best-selling author. I'm not kissing your you know, hind end, but I mean, you really are one of the main minds. You've got all these schools of knowledge well, and history and being in the much. military and all the rest of it. Um, but... There's no way this this plan came out of humans. I mean, this is the devil. I mean, if the devil wasn't I see even what you mean. I mean, I mean, I would say this I to an atheist. Even if there wasn't a spiritual devil, we're building one. I, I mean, right. I mean, this thing is Satan. Everything. I mean, it, it, it's beyond anything you can imagine. It's orchestrated. My gut gets not chills of fear, chills of like, I mean, you, you know, my spirit. Can your spirit can feel it? I mean, this is danger Absolutely. approaching. Tentacles growing in all around us. Um, Alex, Alex, you know, uh, sometime I listen to you on the radio. Uh, and you know you're you're ranting and you're raving, but listen, you make perfect sense. You make you make perfect sense. I, you know, I, I told Wanda, I said, you know, I, Alex is ingenious in what he's saying. If you weren't out here, the the people would have no one that they can listen to that 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 makes sense. We're trying to make sense. I wrote this book, Robot Alchemy. Uh, uh, to, to explain to people what's happening with the uh, computer and robot revolutions, where it's all headed. We're, we're just talking about 10, 15, 20 years 
uh, down the pike. But until then, they're busy de uh, developing what I call the digital prison. Everything around us is a prison. We're going to have to break out of it. I mean, this is the bottom line, Alex. We're going to have to break out of this prison. We're going to have to, yes, keep our guns. We're going to have to keep our heads. We're going to have to say, okay, this is what they're doing now. What are we going to do to stop it? This is humanity's great test. It. It is. This is, and, and there you go. And, and think there of how go. few of us there were. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, the numbers are growing. And as everything we talked about comes true, as people see that it's not a dark side, it's all evil, Absolutely. then the credibility will rise. And what matters is then they'll get their soul right. And that's what matters is eternity. Well, it is for eternity. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm so glad as we're ending this program, uh, I, I'm glad you're talking about uh, what really matters, what really counts to people. But you know, until that moment comes, when we're taken out of the world or whatever happens to us or Jesus returns. I think we've got a big responsibility here to educate people, to, to make people, to help them to understand uh, these things. That's what I'm all about. That's what you're all about. That's the only reason we're here uh, is, is to do that. And, and I think that, that you've, you, you, you know, it seems to me you're going deeper and deeper into technology, the, the technology of the prison. This is a prison. It's a labyrinth. Into. Yeah. You know, when I was a young man, we had all the liberty in the world. I mean, if you think back to the way it was, you know, when you were just a young lad and today, everything, I, I'm afraid that the, the youth of today don't see it that way. They're going to be in prison and think that it's normal. They will. They'll think everything is normal. They're going to be, you know, get, getting a chip. They're, 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 they're ready for it. Boy, give me, they're going to line up for it. But the cancer and all the other things are just exploding as they soft kill us on the bio weapon end. But it's always like Dr. Nick Baggett says, he goes, look, the bio is small. It's important compared yeah. to the electronic. And yeah. that's where the main focus is. The key is they don't need us. They don't need. And they say they want to get rid of, of us. And, and they want to get rid of us. We're useless eaters. Uh, they, they, they've got to get rid of us. Now, we're, a lot of people are fighting for immigration and all these things, and that's all great. But the, the biggest issue of the day is the prison system, the, the, the planet prison that we're in. And we're yeah, the big issue is they want us all fighting with each other over issues, yeah, they do. which are real, so we've got to deal with them. Right. But overall, there is a unified... I had Rothkop on uh, about five, six years ago. I saw he had a book out, the super class, you know, for world government mm. in the Washington Post. So you, they, have, they do book tours. We call, we get them on. Listeners always ask, how'd you get that guest? Well, when people have a book out, they'll come on. Uh -huh. uh, and I tell other talk shows, we can't seem to figure that out. They're how to get guests. So I get him on. He actually knew who I was. And during the break, I'm like, why are you coming on? I'm going to yell. He goes, well, I think I can convince you. He goes, yeah, there's 6,000 super class that serve about 20 families. And during the break, he's like, the board ops heard it. He goes, you're kind of the super class and the conspiracy thing. Alex, you ought to, <laughs> and then, of course, later I called him. He won't come back on now because I didn't, you know, at least come his direction a little. Because yeah. he always say, you're real smart. Come along with us. You know, uh -huh. that's kind of, you know, the public's kind of, yeah. But, 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 but Rothkop on air just admitted all this, but they put it in a good light. But if you put in a bad life, then it doesn't exist and you're bad. But we're talking about 20 families or so. We're talking about maybe 6,000 super class servants, I agree with him, uh, and uh, they're building a hellish world. So, so what would you say to the quote super class people? Because everything I know about history, but also my gut and my spirit says, they're gonna have the worst lot in all this. And the reason they're unfulfilled and unhappy, a lot of them, and is because they're not helping people. And it doesn't mean you can't take care of yourself, but just this, this idea that because you can lie to people and you can figure out how things work, and instead of figuring out how things work and then trying to teach others, they figure out how it works and then want to dumb people down to control them. You know, whether they're communist or whether they're capitalist, it doesn't matter. They all work together. This is the way it's always happened. The capitalists help the communists. Uh, and the communists have the capitalists, and it's all one a big thing. You know, Solzhenitsyn said, has it ever struck you as odd that the capitalists help the communist? You know, there, there's really only one class uh, in, in, uh, among the elite. And maybe there are 6,000, but there are many more thousand that are willing servants. That, that are so ambitious. Yeah, 6,000 super gophers. Now, you've set yourself against these people. I can see that. You set yourself against these people. They, I, th I think they're trying to figure out what to do. One thing that our founding fathers gave us was that Bill of Rights. 
We still have vestiges of it. We, we need to hang on to it like a tattered Well, you document. always ask that question about why aren't we dead or what are they going to do with you? Because you've known me for long to my parents. You know, you married my wife and I. I mean, you know I'm for real. The, the enemy wants to say he's not real because they don't want people to think they're real. The oh, truth yeah. is these are men yeah. we're fighting. They've got the devil. We're men. We're women. We've got God. I mean, Absolutely. we need to realize we've got the power. The world's being turned over evil because we stand down. So, 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 so answer that question. What do you think the establishment's thinking about your work, my work, all of us. Well, you know, first of all, they say you know that Alex Jones text Mars uh, are uncouth or stupid or whatever, but they know that's not true. They they see what you've done on your own. They know I've written 46 books. They they can't duplicate that. They're they're trying to figure out how to uh, 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 stop us, how to uh, embarrass you, how to uh, throw you know things in the you know the the, the machine to stop us. Uh, to, to stop info wars. But I think the Bible really has their number. It does say that, just as you said in James, the book of James. It says, listen up, you rich men. You're going to howl in your miseries. You're going to throw your silver and your gold into the street. And the, the just people that complain to you about their wages and you killed you're going to answer for. Now, I'm paraphrasing it, but that's what it says. It says the just people they complained about the I think their that's wages. almost a perfect you, quote. You held back the money from their wages. You know, you, you did it illegally uh, to, to feather your own nest or whatever. Uh, it says, you know, you're going to have to pay for this. That's what James said. But James also said something. He said, don't say to yourself, I'm going to go tomorrow and do this. I'm going to go tomorrow and do that. Say, if God wills, I will do this. And I've always found that very, uh, a great uh, you know, what would you call it, a motto or thing to live by? Do whatever God says. You know, people say to me, what, what are you going to do next? Well, I'm going to do whatever God says I'm going to do. And that's all I'm going to do, unless they take me away. And if they take me away, I'm going to continue to do whatever God says. And, and that's always stood by me very well. And I hope it'll stand by you sure. too, Alex. When I first, one final point, and then I want you to plug the websites and the free newsletter and all the great things you're doing over there at powerprophecy.com. When I first read your books, like 18 years ago, right before I was getting on the air and, and, and was seeing stuff, you were talking about the, the Illuminati, the Communists, the New World Order. It was all there, but you you, you didn't really, because you're kind of like a you know, mainline Protestant preacher. There's a lot of mm -hmm. pro-Israel stuff there, because that's how we're all brought up. Sure. That's how I was brought up, you know, just overall. Um, you know, the Bible, people, the Bible, all that. But then you've really focused a lot on Israel and, and select kind of mafia groups that control the Jewish people. Yeah. And, and we hadn't got into that today because I said, cover whatever you want. You want to get into your new book coming out, which is what I, I'm, you know, I'm really into. But my issue, I see a lot of corruption out of the Israel lobby, but then also see the eugenics involved that like, you know, radiated 110,000 Jewish kids in Israel with the ringworm kids. So I see a triple, double game. You know, uh, you, you, you told me, hey, Kissinger says Israel won't exist. You quote all that. So yeah. what is the master plan? Because what I see is it's like some of the uh, you know, Jewish mafia groups bombed mm -hmm. Jewish synagogues in, in Iraq and stuff in the 40s to make them go to uh, Israel. They did it in Spain. So I just see it as a wicked group managing both ends and then doing things in names. But obviously the Bible, Jesus, all this, Israel's at the heart of it and so it is an important thing and, and uh, you know then they spit and say well that's just anti-semitic but that's not actually what you're doing you're pointing no, out no, a no. thread in things so 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 briefly speak on that because there's all these contradictions mm -hmm. and then you've got the white supremacist out there who lie and make stuff up because <laughs> I've experienced sure. it you yeah. know uh, and, and and said I've never exposed Israel or blah 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 or you know all Jews of the devil stuff like this you know, you know how do you deal with that well, well you know when someone somebody says why don't you uh, expose the Catholics or the Jews or or whatever of course there's, there's evil in all these things, but you know, it's like so much evil in so little time, you know, that you've got to do here. Uh, you know, Henry Kissinger called up uh, a columnist for the New York Post. This was about two months ago. And he said, I would like for something to be on the front page of your newspaper, a quote from me. She said, okay. Uh, uh, Betsy, uh, one of her names, you can get the New York Post. Sure, I saw it. I saw it. Uh, and he said, in 10 years, Israel will not exist. That's all. That's all he wanted to say. But he, but he, but he wanted to tell the whole world. B because uh, in the Jewish Kabbalah and Talmud, you tell people what you're going to do before you do it. If you're going to murder somebody, you tell them beforehand. Well, that's like that Indians, counting, counting coup. Yeah, that, that relieves you of the guilt of doing it, uh, according to this theory. 
So he's saying in 10 years there will be no Israel. What does that mean? They just came out with a new DNA study by uh, Dr. Ilan Elhaik of St. John's uh, Hopkins uh, School of Medicine, one of the most distinguished schools uh, in America. He's Jewish. He says that the Jewish, there is no Jewish people that all of the Jews in the world came from the Khazars and such. Now, there have been other genetic studies on this. In other words, there, no one living in Israel today has ancestors who came from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Except for the Sephardic Jews of uh, uh, yeah, well, Middle yeah, Eastern but, Jews. But those are, are less than 2% of the, of the Jews. In fact, the Palestinians are more Israelite than the Jews but, are. But by the way, it was Sephardic Jews they radiated. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, and by the way, now is it's a uh, Obama's going. Why would the Why would the Israelis want to kill Jews that are genetically the, like the, the, the truly ancient Jews? Well, they're the Ashkenazi Jews. You know, it's it's a long story. The Ashkenazi Jews are the Khazars. They're not Israelites. The Sephardi, many of them are. Those that stayed in the Middle East are. So the people, when Netanyahu says God gave us the title of this land, you know, five thousand years ago, no such thing. His ancestors came from Khazaria. All of the all of so the So there's been new there. genetic research showing that's a true theory. So this is this just came The 13th out. tribe's been confirmed. I didn't know that. Yeah, Arthur Kessler, you know, the poor guy died. Uh, some say he was murdered. Uh, he was he was a, a, a very good Zionist Jew. And he wrote the 13th tribe. He said they came from the, all, all of the historians and archaeologists have always said this. I wanted to know That's around Georgia. Yeah, I, I wanted to know the truth. I wanted to say, well, what is the truth on this? Well, now we have DNA evidence that says the Jews are converts. They're pagans who converted to Judaism. They do not, their, their bloodlines do not go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And not only that, but, but Dr. Elhaik, who is Jewish, uh, who is a real fighter there, he says there's no doubt about it. It's science. So what happens? What do all the Christians do? I, I, I want to say this. Uh, Henry Kissinger knew of this study. He knows of this. Uh, I, I think the the the, the, the well, no, it's really chic to hate Israel, uh, and and I, I see them building it up, Antichrist stuff. Like, I mean, he claims to be, and then kills him. I mean, this is crazy, right? right. The elite. That's what I'm saying. It's more the, sophisticated. The elite have been have, have latched on to Israel. As a as a tactic, as a, as just a strategy. Just like I saw America's plunging in the polls. They have us do the dirty work, then they destroy us. Absolutely. Look, the Rothschilds and the others are Sabbatean Jews. They worship Satan. They, 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 don't, they don't worship the Bible. They have a serpent that they worship. I know this sounds fantastic. Of course it is. But what we well, have... Well, that was because of that ancient area north of Georgia. That I mean, I mean that right. was the... Right. Kazakhstan, Georgia, all no. those areas uh, in there. Those people migrated over to Europe. There were three million Polish people. Now, when Israel was formed, David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister, was a Polish guy. Shimon Peres is Polish. They, 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 that wasn't even their names. They changed their names to sound like they were Israelites. So we have a nation of imposters. But we, it would be wrong of us to hate these people. It would be wrong of us uh, to not get the, 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 the right idea here. The right idea is this. These people have been used. They have been used for, for foul purposes. They, they have been used to set up a, a bastion in the Middle East. But they will be dealt with. They'll be destroyed once the, the, the New World Order has... Yeah, why is Saudi Arabia so precious? I mean, they are just hands off. We've never seen such attacks when we criticize Saudi Arabia. And that's when, you, like, when you're over the target, you get the flag. Well, yeah, it's interesting that the 9-11 people, you know, what, 17 of the 19 came... But, I mean, look how Al-Qaeda comes out of there, but we never hear about that, and how they're using Saudi Arabia to take over Libya and Syria. I mean, are they planning a big clash, too, that Pike talked about with the Muslims, too? Yeah, well, Pike was an interesting character who had the plan. And he said, he said, basically, the plan is that there will be a great clash between the Muslims, the Christians, with the Jews sort of sitting on the sideline, but they'll be destroyed, too, so that atheism will be the true yeah. religion, and Lucifer will be the one we worship. And, and I think that's the, the key here. We have to understand these people do not worship the Old Testament. Uh, and, and I'm talking about the Illuminati elite. They don't worship the Old Testament. They, they don't believe in the Old Testament at all. They have the Kabbalah. I mean, you know, when you see Madonna with her little red band, 
Bill Clinton has it. Britney Spears has a little red uh, a wristband. They're into the Kabbalah. They're not into the Old Testament. They're not into... That's uh, mysticism uh, picked up in Egypt, Babylon, and then the Khazars. It absolutely is. That's where it all comes from. And it's admittedly that. It, admittedly. Uh, I mean, that's all Admit, Raiders yeah. of the Lost Ark. And yeah. that's what drives me crazy. We're informed. People say there's no Illuminati. It's in history books. Yeah. And everything, you know, and it's just so, I just want, I want everybody, no matter what black child, Jewish child, German child, Chinese child, to not jump off suicide nets. I just want to fuse your text. I know that's what you want. Amazing. We'll have to have you back on on a history lesson Great to be on here. that because I find it fascinating. Uh, and you know, the way I've described it is. I don't like any of the racist groups. I don't like the, the racist Jewish mafia that's attacking me all the time, the ADL. I don't like the Mexican mafia attacking me. I don't like the the uh, the uh, you know Muslim groups that say I'm horrible because I don't say kill all the Jews. I don't like uh, you know it's like I don't like Hitler. I don't like Stalin. I don't like the British royalty. I don't like Che Guevara. You know, so often it's like, well, go. this group's bad, so you must like Che, or or America's corrupt. So well, you know, why isn't Hugo Chavez good? Yeah. Well, compared to a lot of dictators, he wasn't that bad. But he stole a lot of property and stuff mm -hmm. from from poor people. Even you know, I mean, it's just the, the real world. You got to have discernment. You got to have nuance. You got to have history. And I'm just coming in with 39 into being able to really start figuring things out. And it just to, to an elitist, they get off on the general public being like uh, deaf, dumb, and blind people who can't mm -hmm. even communicate. And 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 then they use that to control them. And I want to empower them. But I think. I think, do you agree a lot of it is spiritual? You know, God has to it, touch it is him. spiritual. Here's the, here's the real question. Why was Henry Kissinger protected? When he said Israel will not exist in, in 10 years. Remember, he's Jewish. Well, why, why was he not attacked by the press? How dare he say If Ahmed Dinesh would say that, they'd say nuking. Oh, well, they would say, look, he's, he's got a plan. He wants, to, he wants to kill us all. He wants to bring back the Holocaust. But Henry Kissinger said it. Nobody asked a thing. He just says it. And you're supposed to accept it. Well, I don't accept it. I want to know what he means. Well, that's by like Rove said. We're history's actors now. They say it, and we accept their reality. Well, I say I'm not there accepting the reality. Powerprophecy.com. Uh, people can also call and get a very. I mean, it's not a news. It's really a magazine. Really nice newsletter. Tell people about some of the stuff. Well, they can go to powerprophecy.com. Of course, our TexMars.com. Uh, You've got a Liberty and Truth conference coming up with uh, Jim Mars, a bunch of other people. Yeah, Jim Mars, a, a lot of great people. Uh, I hope people go to this January the 7th. They can, uh, January the 6th, excuse me. They'll see about, uh, about that on our website. By the way, I want to mention this book, Robot Alchemy, will not be out. You're, this is the premiere. I mean, I, nobody in the world knows about this book except InfoWars and you right now today. Uh, so this book will not be out until about April the 20th. So people have about six weeks to think about it. Uh, maybe they'll want the book, maybe not. But Robot Alchemy will be out in about six weeks. This was really the... the, the the, the, well, I'm honored. Well, well, uh, you know, I wanted to do that, and and uh, Alex, I appreciate you so much. I appreciate everything you're doing here uh, to to warn uh, folks. Thank you so much. Thank God you bless so you and Wanda. God bless you too. You bet, buddy. And again, that's powerprophecy.com. Our site's infowars.com, and we have the video streams at prisonplanet.tv. And that's it for tonight's edition. But the restream uh, with the start of the show with Jakari Jackson sitting here in the chair doing the nightly news. He did a great job. So did the crew. Uh, is coming up in just a moment when the show ends and again the archive is always posted a few hours after uh, up at prisonplanet.tv and don't forget 5.95 a month is 11 subscriptions i really said 10 but you get your own membership and then 10 more can simultaneously log in at prisonplanet.tv and again the crew i salute you their only fault is they try to do too good a job and do too much and we get overwhelmed but it's better to attempt too much and succeed a lot than just sit on our hind ends and fail so god bless you all and lord willing we'll see you back tomorrow night for another edition of InfoWars Nightly News.